so many people in and out, just a testament to how much this family has actually impacted the community. Um, and in honor of Susie's love for Jeeps, we actually flooded the parking lot <laughs> so that you guys could get the experience of what it's like to go mudding in a Jeep Wrangler. We actually kept it flooded today, too, so if you didn't get to experience it last night, you're, you're free to partake. Whip as many donuts as you'd like. Um, the one thing I thought after I left the visitation last night, after listening to Terry and his sons, there is no way that Susie would have wanted us to make such a big fuss about her. She just wouldn't, she wouldn't have been, she, she just liked to, she didn't want to be a burden to anybody. Um, and I think even up until the end, none of us really knew how actually sick she was and how much pain she was in. But thankfully we love and serve a God who's now given her a brand new body. And brand new eyesight, and uh, she's celebrating with the King of Kings. So, can I get an amen? Um, <clears throat> Susie and the Kuhn family is uh, loyal <laughs> and honoring. I think of a time when uh, we had a disagreement here, and rather than them packing up their bags and leaving, they called us. And that's when I figured out that uh, the Kuhn family is also very opinionated. Uh -huh. <laughs> And, uh, but it was amazing because they talked it out with us. We discussed and in the end, all four of us were crying, realizing how grateful we were for one another um, and for, for what we meant to each other in each other's lives. And you don't find that very often. So that's something that really sticks close to my heart. Um, Terry and Susie Kuhn are absolute proof that opposites attract. Um, when I hung out with Terry, I knew everything he thought from the second we met until the second he went home. Even if I didn't need to know what he was thinking, he still shared it. Susie, I was always guessing. You know, I'm extrovert, so and she's an introvert, and I was always like, Is, does she like me? But then when I'd go up and shake her hand and talk to her, give her a hug, she'd just give me the biggest smile, and, and, and I could just see in her eyes that she, she really was... Um, did love me and appreciate me, and it means a lot to me, it really does. Um, it's an honor to serve the Kuhn family, it's an, and it's an honor to serve the Winberg family. For those of you who don't know, Susie's dad and mom actually founded this place uh, 40 years ago, and uh, it's still alive and kicking today, and it's, it's been a huge impact in my life, it's been a huge impact in my family's life. They've walked me through hard times, they've walked my family through hard times, and it's an honor to be up here today to be able to walk uh, through with them. Doing funerals was never something I looked forward to as being a pastor, but as time has gone on, I've started to realize that this is where you get to give back in a hard time to those who um, who matter the most to you, and we all get to partake in that in this next season. So I wanted to say a blessing for Susie rather than opening with a prayer, and I found one that I, I really liked, and it, it goes like this. It goes, may you always walk in sunshine and, God's, and God around you flow. For the happiness you gave us, no one will ever know. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you did not go alone. A part of us went with you the day God called you home. A million times we needed you, a million times we cried. If love could have only saved you, you would have never died. The Lord be with you, and may you rest in peace. So thank you, God, for sharing Susie with us for the time that we all knew her, for who she was as a mother, as a sister, as a daughter, as a grandmother, as a friend. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing she has been to each and every one of us. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. For those of you I haven't met, I'm Carrie Kuhn. I've had the privilege to be Susie's daughter-in-law. <laughs> Since Lance and I took our time finding each other, I only met Susie 17 years ago, but she's been a quiet co-conspirator for all that time. During my first official fight with Lance, pregnant, in tears, in a store parking lot, 
I called Susie and I wailed at her <laughs> that her son would not buy me and her future grandbaby the adorable caterpillar coat rack I wanted. <laughs> she wryly stood up for me and told her silly son to buy the overwrought pregnant woman that dang coat rack. <laughs> Susie knew just when to step in and bash you over the head when emotions or logic loops were getting in the way of just getting something done. But she also gleefully enjoyed reminding you of your less than logical moments, as she did to me the following Christmas when she presented her new grandbaby with an eight-foot stuffed caterpillar toy to match the caterpillar coat rack. <laughs> the sole woman in her immediate household, Susie was certainly outnumbered, but she was never outgunned. She could match joke for joke, wit for wit, and stop an argument flat with a sarcastic comment. She finally tolerated and often enabled Terry's, Lance's, and Jamie's hobbies, passions, and eccentricities. Conversations flowed around fishing, Jeeps, RC cars, guitars, beer signs, and a myriad of other topics. She kept up with them all and loved seeing the passion and excitement her family took in their hobbies and their work. Few people have the honor of spending their entire lives close to their parents and siblings. Susie has always been close to Barb and Leroy. And I recall many hours spent during holidays and get-togethers where Susie provided the hospitality, ensuring each person had a favorite food or beverage just for them, while Bob and Leroy were invited to sit at the place of honor and enjoy time surrounded by their family. Barb, Leroy, you raised a beautiful woman with a precious heart. Susie's heart and life say a great deal about the home you created and the love you showered on your children. Tyler... Parker, Brecken, Easton, Kesa, Mira, Grandma Susie adored you. She celebrated your achievements, remained curious about the things that interested you, and her heart ached when you were in pain. She loved listening to your talk about even the small, mundane things. Gathering her children around her kept her heart young and gave her so much joy. When I look at you, I see her legacy, and it's a beautiful one. Susie took great pride in her work. She had the ability to corral chaos, keep tons of balls up in the air, and legitimately cared about her work family. Thank you, for, to, thank you to her liquid transport family for making her feel essential, valued, and keeping her laughing while she herded all those cats in the right direction. Mother-in-laws have a bad rap, but I hit the jackpot with Susie. Not like Susie could hit the jackpot. <laughs> I stopped being surprised by all the times Susie could walk out of a casino with money in her pocket. She and I shared a lot of interests in common. Obviously, her son Lance. But we both loved fall leaves, pine cones, plays and musicals, and seeing the kids grow and achieve. I never precisely embraced her love of country music, but listening to her belt out her willingness to key a truck slash tires, and take a Louis Aville slugger to a headlight and should I always was going to stay on her good side. <laughs> Inexplicitly, Susie didn't like to fly, but through long drives and conversations, she made the journey as important as the destination. One other thing I shared with Susie was her love of peace and solitude. Much of that stemmed from her natural inclination as an introvert, but later in life she retreated out of fear of being a burden to those around her. She treasured her independence, and that became harder to maintain in public and easier at home. Terry, you were a blessing. As you encouraged her to pursue the things that brought her joy, you gave her reasons to laugh every day, and you quietly supported her in ways that left her feeling, feel valued and productive. Terry, through all your years together, you pushed Susie to be the best version of her. You took, on her, you took her on adventures. You pushed her to try new things. You raised two great boys together. You shared a strong faith together, and you kept her laughing every day. Your marriage for 49 years has been a blessing to witness. Recently, while reading a story by Lois and Master Bujold, I was struck by a passage that reminded me of Susie. It goes, the woman was beloved, God touched, great souls. The true sort who moved through the world as silently as a fish, unnoticed by carnal eyes that focused only on outward domination and display, but never on the small woman in a small town being kind, soul by soul. 
That's how I knew Susie. She made an impact without flash and circumstance, person by person, soul by soul. Susie, you are loved and you are missed.
Dean, I had the distinct pleasure of being the pastor of Terry and Susie Cohn for 30 years. I'm actually only 40, but they aged me <laughs> in all the best ways. Um, I have to start this by telling you that Susie and I had opposite taste for music. <laughs> that should come as no surprise. She sat right about where Liam is one time, and I was trying to be smart and silly, which is a mistake when Susie's in the room and she isn't going to be smart and silly with you. And I said, you know, when you've heard one country song, you've heard them both. <laughs> That is not how she responded. <laughs> Quietly, she harumphed and sat there and looked, glared at me and went <laughs> for the rest of my message. So I had it coming. I, I, I asked for that. I'm, the privilege I have in coming to moments like this is that there's an old saying that says, live your life in such a way as when you die, your pastor doesn't have to lie about you. <laughs> no lies detected in what I'm going to share here this morning. This, this is another one of those moments here at Living Word Chapel when the privilege of honoring somebody who has walked on is to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. And it's all beautiful and it's all significant. So in my pondering what to, sh what to share about Susie, I, you know, honestly, I, I thought, you know, she was so quiet and so intentionally introverted. What do you say? She was quiet and intentionally introverted. <laughs> and I prayed on it, and suddenly 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11 came, like, flying up at me, and I want to read it to you. Make it your ambition or aspire, be ambitious about this, to lead a quiet life. American ambitions are usually not about leading a quiet life. Western ideas of aspiring, I aspire to fill in the blank, and it's usually loud, it's usually flashy, it's usually shiny, it's usually jumping up and down somewhere and getting a lot of attention. But in this passage, Paul says, make it your ambition. Be ambitious to lead a quiet life. And attend to your own business. Here's another way to say it. Mind your own business. <laughs> and work with your hands. Paul, the apostle, knew Susie just as we have commanded you. In a minute, I'll come back to 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 4. But right there is Susie, leading a quiet life. But never mistake, and I'm sure those of you that know her, never mistake quietness for silence. And in fact, I would suggest her quietness had volumes. <laughs> so that you knew, as I shared a moment ago, you knew when she was not with you. <laughs> and quietly, she could give you. <laughs> I would say every one of us should aspire to more of that. A loud quietness. A specific kind of settledness. Because quiet doesn't come because you zip, zip your lip. Quiet comes because you're settled. Quiet comes because you got no more mountains to climb to prove anything to anybody. Susie had nothing to prove to anybody. I'll come back to that. Mind your business is the second part of this. Lead a quiet life, have ambition to be quiet, have an ambition to mind your business. It's been said that we can mind our own business best when we've got business worthy to attend. I hope you caught that. When our business is worthy of attending, when our business matters, 
we will preoccupy our attention with that business rather than knowing about everybody else's business. So growing up in forest, as some folk forced her to do, <laughs> everybody's business is somebody's business. <laughs> Having been in forest for 34 years, yes, we moved here from Texas. Yeah, we are that crazy. <laughs> 34 years ago, we discovered real quick that everything you do is everybody's business. I'm going to tell on Barb real quick here. I got to do this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to do it, Barb. Let's get it out of the way right now. We came home one day, Libby and Jonathan, our kids, and Ginger and I walked in the door, turned on the lights, and the landline was ringing. I mean, remember those landlines? It was ringing. Oh, wow, that's timing. Picked it up, and Barb said, Hi, I just saw your lights come on. <laughs> We're a mile and a half away. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm not looking at you, Barb. Mind your own business, right? Listen. <laughs> Barb, you can mind my business any day of the day. Ambitious to be quiet. Ambition to mind your business. And ambition to work hard. Paul said, work with your hands. Put your hand to something. Touch something and make it better. Be ambitious, not to make money, but to make work matter. If you flip burgers, flip the best burger anybody ever ate. And I'm, I'm very serious about that. Put your hand to something and make it matter. This was Susie Kuhn. As long as I've known her, this girl worked. And she put her hand to stuff with love. Listen, there's a big difference between hard work and working hard. Most of us complain about how hard work is. I never heard Susie complain about how hard work was because she worked hard. My understanding is even in the last several weeks when she's been sick, her phone was at the ready to be called. I gotta be honest and say, I look at the phone and say, go away, before answering. You know, that's the beauty of cell phones. No, not Susan. Let me, let me, get, let me bring it in for a landing on this. I understand, and I've known this about Susie, and Terry and I had lunch the other day, and he, he repeated it to me, that she struggled with her self-esteem. She struggled to, to feel good about her. And her outlet in that struggle was putting her hand to her work and coming away feeling good about what she did and about how she served her company. A long time ago, a movie called Spanglish, Cloris Leachman played a mama of a daughter who was rather self-absorbed and spoiled. I didn't look at you on purpose. <laughs> In fact, I, I intended to look at you and say that, and I thought, no, don't do that, and then I did it. <laughs> you can hit me later. <laughs> Cloris Leachman had a self-absorbed, spoiled daughter, and, she's, and her daughter was freaking out about something else again, and Cloris was a little bit whined at the moment, and she did one of these. She said, you know, honey, Sometimes your low self-esteem is just good common sense. Let's unpack that one second. I would recommend not living in self, a low self-esteem, but I would recommend knowing yourself. Know yourself. Where is my esteem at in this moment? And the, the phrase now is, be right-sized. Yes? You, you know what that means? Stay in your lane, be right-sized. And often we're all over the place. We aren't minding our own business. I'm guilty of this one as much as anybody. I'm guilty of being a spoiled daughter. <laughs> I am. But out of that spoiled nature, I've had more than my occasion of being outsized, more important than I needed to be, 
and then feeling like I wasn't getting all the kudos I ought to get every day. And then I felt this low self-esteem coming in. And sometimes, are you hearing what I'm saying? A low self-esteem is common sense. It's pulling it in. I gotta tell you, I think Susie Kuhn lived that. The common sense of staying right-sized. Does that make sense? The common sense to know what her lane was and work it hard. And if it became known to her you had a problem, if it became known to her that something about you everybody else is talking about, I would, I would propose that I knew sh her, her, um, her priorities well enough to know. She would move along, go find herself some loose slots at some place, win a few bucks, and take her mind off of your business. Right-sized. That was Susan. One last thing here. Back to that first Thessalonians passage. This blew me away. I, I'm, I'm very serious. I know what else is in 1 Thessalonians 4. It's something we often read at memorials or funerals or gravesites. 1 Thessalonians 4.11, I just read, said, lead a quiet life, attend to your own business, work with your hands just as we commanded you. But it closes by saying, but we would want you to be, we would not want you to be uninformed, brethren, about these things, about those who are asleep. I love that analogy of death. That you would not grieve as those who have no hope. You see the context here? For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and even so, he will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. See you soon, Susie. See you soon, Mom, Dad. He'll bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven and shout, and there will be a voice of an archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. I've got all kinds of opinions about that, and we only got one more minute to go. And I'm just going to tell you this. Susie's not gone. She's asleep. She's getting a good, long overdue nap. But she's napping wide awake in the arms of Jesus. And in that, in that moment of napping wide awake, She's no longer just going. <laughs> she's sad. Because she's still quiet, ain't she? And I love that kind of quiet. Thank you. Now we have the privilege of standing for a song. Would you stand, please?
So I'm going to hand the mic off to the bouncer <laughs> because he's more intimidating than me. Take a moment, and if you've got a story to share, and Sean will bring you the mic. I'll try not to cry. I knew them for, I don't know, 15 years, I suppose, and I've known them since, just haven't seen them close and often as I used to. What, re what I remember most about Susie, she didn't talk as much as some of us did, right, Terry? <laughs> but when she said something, it always meant something. She would sometimes say something that was so funny. She'd be, she'd be there, you wouldn't know she's funny, you wouldn't know she had a funny episode coming, and she would say a little something, not a long spoon, just a short little, and it'd be funny as all get out. There'd be other times when somebody was hurting with something in life, and her words and her things, short, short little words, not a long, blah, 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 but what she said, made you know she loved you and that she cared about your life being a beautiful thing. And that's when I found about her passing, I thought, this earth is going to miss that life because of that that she did. It wasn't overflowing, but it was powerful and real and beautiful. Hope I can get through this. First of all, thank you everyone. <laughs> There's people that were here last night and here again today, and thank you all so much. You honor Susie by being here, and the stories I've heard, everything, it, it just touches my heart. I wasn't gonna talk today, but I hope I get through this, but I just wanted to, to say you know a few things about Susie that maybe people didn't know, but so many things have already been said, how she was quiet. And a lot of people, not a lot, there's a few people I know took that quietness to think she wasn't a very friendly person. Let me tell you, that is so wrong. I wanted to make that straight. I gotta get something else out of the way too. Um, Everybody said she never complained or never did anything. You wasn't there when she came home from work on a bad day. <laughs> that, you, you just weren't there, you know. 
and she would come up and she might say something like, I'm going to quit pretty, I'm going to, you know, and I was hoping she would. I retired about a year ago fully and I wanted, I was looking forward to enjoying times and travel and things with her, but she loved her work, her work was her life and it meant so much to her. And she loved the people at work. The people at work is where she got, I think, more respect than any place else in the world because she was the go-to person. But she was also my go-to person. I always told Susie was my compass. Susie would lift me up when I was down and she would knock me down when I was up. <laughs> I remember times when I would done something or something when I was pretty proud of an accomplishment and I'd be kind of, you know, bragging about a little bit and my head would swell a little bit and she would say, aren't we proud of ourselves today? <laughs> you know, did you have any help with that along the way or anything like that or possibly, you know, on those lines? That type of thing. I'm going to do true confession today, and I ask for this, and this is probably going to hear something talked about you've never heard in church, least of all a funeral. It, it, it came to attention last night, and as an honor. It was probably about this time of year in March. A lot of people have probably looked at the folder and say, gosh, Susie and Terry were married in 1973. She graduated in 1974, okay, put two and two together, okay. Leroy reminded me of a time today, and it reminded me, and it brought back the beginning of my journey with Susie and life. Barb and Leroy had just came back from a trip, and they were tired, and they went to their bedroom, the thing we had to say, and Susie and me said, yeah, we got to tell them. And Leroy was joking at me today, and he said, remember, you used to stutter a lot. And I said, I still do. <laughs> Not a lot, but I used to stutter a lot, if you would have known me back then. And I'm looking at him right now, and it reminds me of a time we went in there, we had to tell him, and like Leroy said, the way you told it, Terry, it's Leroy, Susie's, Susie, Susie pregnant. <laughs> okay, now you think, I'm a 19-year-old young man. This, for you people that don't know and attend Living Word Chapel and know him well, this is One Punch Leroy. <laughs> Leroy, when he was 70 years old, working yet at the company that Susie was with, Liquid Transport, he's driving a gas truck, Guy came up behind him and grabbed him from behind and was witnessed by a person inside the store. Tried to take his billfold. Leroy turned around one punch, knocked the guy down. Guy goes running off and got to be known as at this at 70 years old. Now I'm telling this guy what I just said when he was in his prime and there was not a tougher guy that I knew at that time. At that time, I wasn't uh, as much of a Christian as I am today, and but I was there. I was hoping that God just wouldn't let him kill me. <laughs> but if you know Leroy, he was there, supported us, and I remember the thing that Barb said. Barb said, number one, Barb said, because we said, what do we want to do? We want to get married. You know, I love your daughter. Love your daughter. We want to get married. And Barb, first thing she said was, you know, marriage is a forever and ever thing. Have I fulfilled that? Thank you. Aww. And number two, she said, I want you to promise me one thing that you will get involved, that you will go to church because that means a lot to me. Will you promise me that? Have I kept that promise? <laughs> Susie had a lot to do with me keeping that promise. 
I don't want to make my mother mad. Uh, you know, it feels so good to laugh, and, 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 and I've been crying, I've cried a lot over these last days, and it's been because of the good things. Last night, last night, Susie knows I always loved, you know, and i got to say, something. is it okay if I ramble? Any, will you forgive me? Will you forgive me? Susie, like I said, was always my compass, and she never asked for very, she asked for very few things in life. She really did. But any time I wanted something, she said, you go ahead. I want you to have that and, and do that. After she lost her vision in one eye, she wasn't as outgoing, and, and, and she didn't want to get out and about as much as she did. But she would not hold me back. You know, I, She said, you go do this. You go do that. You don't need me with you. Well, I wanted to do it with her. But at the same time, she was not there. She was not one. She wanted me to enjoy life. <laughs> the prime example of this was uh, on a fishing trip we had set up a while back. It was a group I go with in June, and usually beginning of May or later. But this year, the only time it could be set up, we were married on June 2nd. would have been 50 years. We had to book it over the time. I'd be gone June 2nd. And I told her, I, I went to her and I said, do you care, I said, with this trip, with the great bunch of guys I go with, a lot of them are here and have been here. You know, we got to book the fishing trip then. You know, is that okay? She said, be the best gift you could give me. <laughs> I could be home with some peace and quiet. <laughs> and she was that way. You know, she never wanted to hold me back, but she was the wind beneath my wings. She wanted to quietly sit back and see me be successful in everything I did. Okay? And the blessing I've had through this, I've seen, you know, the job she did. I've got two fantastic sons. You, you can't imagine how proud I am of my son. And that's got to be a testament to her, to the mom she was. Because she became a mom at 17, at a young age where people have to learn. You know, you know we make some mistakes, but we had some real good guidance from her parents who were there for us. It was a village. Because I can't take any credit. I didn't know what the heck I was doing, and I don't know why you two turned out so well, but I'm glad you did. Last night, Susie wanted to know one of the things I always loved. I want to see the northern lights, and every time we would go, uh, I'd go on a fishing trip up in northern Minnesota or Canada. I'd talk about how I would love to see the northern lights again. And I even told her, I said, if we ever hear a report in northern Minnesota, we're going to get in the car and we're going to drive up there and try to stay overnight. Last night when I got home, when I got home, I, I, I looked up and I glanced and I live in Hudson, I live in town, there's a lot of lights and I'm seeing flickering above, above the, the trees a little bit, just a white flicker. And I stood there and I looked, are them northern lights? And I went up to my bedroom, it's higher up, to see if I could see over and I watched for 15 minutes, white light flickering. There's been a lot of pictures going around in some places where how beautiful they were, but them were. I don't know how Susie talked God into doing that. <laughs> but she did, and she did that for me to say everything is okay, and everything is going to be okay. I'm fine. Barbara and Leroy, thank you for giving her to me. You only had her for 17 years. And you missed out on a lot because I had her for 50 years. Had her for 50 years. And that song I just want to end with that my granddaughter played so well, Amazing Grace. There's a part in that song that I always have stuck in my mind, and it's the, you know, the lines are, when we've been there, 
10,000 years, bright shining as the sun. We've no less days to live God's praise than when we'd first begun. In that 17 years you had, the 50 years I had, is nothing compared to the eternity we're going to have. Thank you. If you want to follow that, you're more than welcome to. <laughs> I just met Ma'am. I don't know Susie as long as all of you guys have. I just met her back in May because of Terry and my sister. They introduced me to Terry's brother. And I'll tell you, she was she came wanted to be a best friend to me. I had they invited me on their camping trips. They took me on when they went to see the fall colors. And I'm going to miss her. And I didn't even know her that long. I just want to say, since uh, I've got a chance, that Susie and Terry have been probably the best examples of parents that I've ever seen in my life, you know, more so than a lot of people in my family. And the way that they brought up Jamie and Lance, you guys, you, you did turn out great. And there's always that that feeling like, you know, these, these are really good people, but she had this mischievous streak. And that's, that's, the, that's the thing that I, you know, I, I'm thinking about when everyone says, well, she was quiet and stuff like that. But, you know, every once in a while, like when we were kids, you know, we'd get into some, you know, little, little trouble here and there, playing with vehicles. And, you know, one, at one point, Jamie and I were trying to see whose truck could pull the other backwards, and she was all over stuff like that, you know, just like, any any little bit of action or any little bit of mischief, she would she was she was all in on in, in in her kind of quiet way. But you know, mostly, I I think that you guys were you know thinking back. You know, you, know, you guys were examples to me on the way I try to raise my kids. And uh, I just want to thank you for that and for the times that we had. Speak now or forever hold your peace.
Um, immediately following the service, there will be a meal. We just ask that you allow the family to exit first, follow in, and uh, eat up. In the back of the church, there's, a, there's extra seating. So when this fills up, just head down the hallway. There's a, two rooms back there with some tables in. So, um, And there's plenty of food to eat, so we definitely hope you guys stick around uh, and enjoy a meal with the family. Uh, over the last probably three years here at Living Word Chapel, we've lost uh, some pretty powerful people in our church family. Susie is one of them. Um, and one of the coolest things that I see in these moments is, is a, a life well lived. A, a, like Randy was saying, a staying in your lane and living the life God gave you to the fullest. And it's evident by a, a memorial service that's packed with laughter as well as tears. Um, those are the two biggest signs to me that this was a full life, that, Lucy, or that Susie lived a full life. And of course, Terry would preach a longer sermon than, the, um, uh, than Randy because he never has a short, uh, any shortage of words, but I'm, I'm listening to that was, was powerful to realize, like, wow, I want to aspire to be a husband like that. I want to aspire to be a parent like that. I want to aspire to be a daughter like that. I want to aspire to leave a place like this packed with people who said Sean lived a life to his fullest. My wife lived a life to her fullest. And when I leave these moments, I'm just always inspired to say, like, I'm going to go out and, I, and I'm going to live like this. And I'm, I'm, Susie's legacy lives on in each and every one of us, even if we just met her a couple months ago or we've known her for 67 years. You can't sit in a time like this and not be touched and moved to go out and try to be a better person, to try to, to be a Susie in the community around you. So I'm very, very grateful that I got to be a part of this. Um, in the coming days, weeks, months, and even years, uh, the Coons and the Winbergs have, have some grieving to do. They have some challenges ahead of them. It would be unrealistic to believe that the next... Uh, season of their life shouldn't be, um, shouldn't include that. It's, it's important that we do that. So they're going to need all of us. There's going to need to be some unity as we come together. So you all know each and every one of these people in some way or another. So when they come to your mind, give them a call, shoot them a text, check in on them, invite them out for dinner, invite them over to your house. Just keep, touch, just keep uh, checking in. Because you have no idea how much it's a little text message a little reaching out, even a smiling face emoji can just really turn someone's day around when they're going through stuff like this. So in honor of that unity, I'd like for us all to, to stand, hold hands, and I want to close with the Our Father. <laughs> Whose Father? Thank you all for coming.